Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today we got the 2021 horror book recommendations video. So today I got five books that I've read over the past month about. Some of them were pretty meaty, so uh, that's the reason why I really only have five today. But, uh, but like I said, some were pretty meaty, so uh, we got a lot to cover. Five pretty well-known authors, well four well-known authors, one, uh, one a little more obscure. Uh, but yeah, some good stuff. So let's get into it. Starting with... The Troop by Nick Cutter. This was my first Nick Cutter read. I had been putting this one off for a little bit, strictly because I had heard people say there was a lot of animal cruelty. Um, even though there was, it was within the context of the book. There was one flashback scene with one of the more crazier characters in this book. The kid was completely insane uh, about him torturing and killing a cat, which was a little uncomfortable to read, being a cat owner myself. Uh, but otherwise, in terms of what was going on on the island, um, the animal cruelty was a little more uh, within the taste of, of survival. So, I mean, that is a little more understandable. Uh, getting into what this book was about, basically, the troop is about a troop of Boy Scouts who are on their retreat, their camping retreat, with their um, scoutmaster, whoever their leader is. And um, they're on this remote island off of the coast of uh, Canada. And this man washes ashore on a motorboat and he's clearly sick. And the, the scout leader, he is a, I think he was a doctor or, or something along the lines of a doctor. And so he, he kind of knew the protocol of, you know, this guy may have something pretty, pretty intense here and he wasn't sure what it was. So he, you know, he brought him, he brought him into his cabin trying to help him out. Um, turned out he had this crazy um, parasitic uh, disease, um, I guess is the best term for it, that uh, was very contagious. So uh, it ended up uh, being worms. It was it was worms that were being that were being basically experimented on by the government or the military, I believe, to be used as a as a military weapon. Um, so they would basically spawn inside of you and, and like bust out of you and eat you from the inside out. Um, basically kind of like what actual like worms are if someone were to get them, uh, where you're just eating constantly and it's just taking your nutrients, but this was doing it on a, a crazy scale and, um, just eventually depleting you so much that you're, you're going to end up dying. Um, so it was really contagious. Uh, it was, it was slow oncoming so people would the, the kids that would get it um you know they would they would kind of know they have it and they'd show little symptoms at first but then keep getting worse uh it, overall it's it's a really good read it, it um it's it's body horror it's very gory it's one of the more goriest books that that i have read um but i mean if you're into that kind of thing if you're into that side of the horror genre then this is definitely the one for you like i said the read altogether was good i i did enjoy my first nick cutter experience i thought he did a really good job with it and i do like how he mixed in the snippets of like the news um the newspaper and like the articles and everything like that about what happened on the island he 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 put that in and and it's funny that he mentioned in his afterward that he did take that idea from Stephen King's Carrie because Stephen King did do that in Carrie where he had the articles of what happened uh that night uh, the night of the prom and everything like that with Carrie um after the fact so it was kind of like you were jumping you know, to, to what people were saying after the fact and then coming back into the story at your current time. So that was pretty cool. And I, I do like how he did give the nod to Stephen King in his afterward, which was uh, which was pretty fun to see. So Nick Cutter, The Troop, uh, pretty good read. Okay, next up by Dan Simmons was Carry On Comfort. This book is huge, as you can see. It was very meaty. Uh, there was a lot going on in this one. It was very long-winded, uh, just to sum it up real quick. Uh, I did enjoy it. There was a lot to like about it, but my only thing would, would be to say that it, it could have been done a little more uh, concise. Um, so, I mean, it, it like I said, it was, it was a good read. It just took a little bit to get through. Um, you have to really pay attention to this one. Um, so basically, plot-wise, uh, Carry On Comfort is about these mind vampires, as they were referred to in the novel. So basically, these people that could infiltrate your mind and uh through like 
a form of telekinesis. They could control you and, um, and use you as like a puppet. So they could get inside of you and you would basically become the passenger um, as opposed to being able to, you know, be in control of your bodily functions, basically. And um, they would do that. Like, they were pretty messed up people. Um, there was a very, uh, a very prominent Nazi uh, presence in this book. Um, basically, that's what the Nazis, they were saying, like, historical fiction. Like, that's what the Nazis were doing with in concentration camps. And um, they were playing these really, like, messed up games of chess where they would use people as the actual pieces and move them with their minds. And then when a piece got taken out, they would end up killing that person. And it was a pretty intense game of, of chess. So um, that's what I mean by them being really messed up people. And basically, the story follows one of the ex, you know, resident of the concentration camps back during World War II. And he is trying to find his ex commander that he has had this vendetta against his entire life. He's kind of made it his goal to track him down and kill him. Um, he teams up with a local sheriff and, and uh, a woman who, whose father was an innocent bystander that was killed in the middle of this war that's going on between these people um, with these powers. So uh, in a nutshell, that's basically what this one's about. Like I said, there's a lot to like about it. There's a lot, a lot going on. Um, it's hard to really sum up right here um, everything. Like I said, there's the chess aspect. There's the Nazi aspect. Um, there's the current day aspect. Um, I thought it was like two books written it was almost like a book and its sequel all put into one the first half of the book basically has a, has a plot that it follows and then it kind of really has a crazy sequence in the middle um a crazy action suite sequence that i thought could have been the wrap up to one book and then you know part two turns into you know it jumps a little forward in time and that's like kind of how it all wraps up but it's kind of another story in itself so yeah, there's, there's a lot going on. It's kind of like reading two books, but it, it's a good read. Um, Dan Simmons, I've read a handful of his books now, and this is one of the better ones that I've read. So I do recommend this for you, anyone who uh, who's looking for a very in-depth novel to sink your teeth into and, and put a lot of time into. Give this one a try. Next up, Swan Song by Robert McCammon. This one is my second Robert McCammon book that I've read. I read Boy's Life and I absolutely loved it. Now, even though I did enjoy this read, I, I would say it's not as good as Boy's Life. Um, this one was, it was very depressing. Maybe that's why I didn't enjoy it as much as I enjoyed Boy's Life. But I mean, it has to be expected. It was about nuclear holocaust. Russia and the US bomb each other. Uh, just making, you know, destroying their entire countries and pretty much destroying the world because it goes into nuclear fallout. Um, so this one follows basically what's going on in the U.S. after all that happens. And we follow three different points of views. One being um, a military man and a boy who were in a bunker when it happened. And they're kind of the evil side of things. And the other two being... Um, a homeless woman from New York City who picks up a lot of different companions along her way um, trying to find this girl um, who's a young girl and a uh, who is with a ex-professional wrestler um, who is kind of being her bodyguard and her uh, protecting her. Um, so basically it, it had a lot of stand vibes, you know, good versus evil after the destruction of, after society breaks down, the stand being a virus, this one being nuclear holocaust, two different, two different means of the world falling apart, but kind of the same concept in the end. Um, so yeah, I mean, it was, it was, it was entertaining, but like I said, it was very depressing. So if you're not into those kinds of novels that are kind of, you know, very bleak and, and have a dim outlook, then I wouldn't suggest this one. But I mean, it gave me a lot of like the road vibes by Cormac McCarthy in terms of the feel of it all. But, uh, but yeah, it was, it was a good read. There was a lot of entertaining stuff. And I thought the, uh, the last 200 pages or so were, were pretty good. I, I, I thought it picked up pretty good near the end and the way it all culminated to all three of these, of these factions coming together for one 
uh, final climax was, uh, was pretty good. So a good uh, post-apocalyptic one here. Next up is The Taking by Dean Koontz. Uh, this was super entertaining. I got through this one pretty quick, and um, I have read a few Dean Koontz novels now, and, and I would put this one up there. I really did like it. It was uh, basically about a rain that starts falling one night, and it is very weird. Um, it ends up being aliens, in a way, in this rain, um, and they're, they're kind of like, uh, they kind of had an invasion of the body snatchers thing going on here where, you know, these, these, these very microscopic aliens were inhabiting, um, you know, certain things on earth, whether it be animals or humans and, and things like that. So it started like kind of changing the ecosystem and it was like developing earth to be, um, a, a home planet for these life forms, I guess you could say. Uh, so it was it was an entertaining novel in true Dean Koontz fashion. It, it took place all in one sequence. So it like started at night and it took place over like a couple days straight through, which he tends to like to do. I, I do like that format. It keeps you kind of entertained and, and it's a page turner. There was a prominent dog in this one as well, which is a, a common theme from Dean Koontz. Um, a lot of the same elements and tropes from, from a Dean Koontz novel, but this one was uh, super entertaining. If you like the whole sci-fi horror genre, then I would suggest checking this one out. And the last one is by an author uh, that I hadn't heard of going into this one, Alden Bell. Uh, it's called The Reapers Are the Angels. In a way, it is a zombie novel. I wanted to read a zombie novel. You don't really see too much of it in the literature genre. Um, so I checked this one out. And like anything else, you know, like The Walking Dead, it's kind of, the zombies are kind of like the, the setting. It, it doesn't really have to do with the zombies. The zombies aren't really a threat. Um, these zombies in this case were were pretty easy to deal with. They were slow. They were dumb. Um, so like I said, it wasn't really about the zombies. They weren't a, the threat. It was other humans that were the threat. Um, the thing I did find about this novel was um, most of the other humans still alive in this post-apocalyptic zombie world were actually pretty accommodating and pretty nice. Whereas, you know, going back to Swan Song as an example, it was like everyone you came across was pretty much just messed up and and you know, out for their own good. Um, so I thought that was a little unrealistic. Um, yeah, it, and like I said, it was a short novel, so there wasn't a whole lot to it. The thing that was good about this novel was the main character, Temple. She uh, is a 15 year old girl and she was badass. Like she was tough as nails. I thought it was pretty cool. You were, you were pretty much reading from her point of view the whole book and just like being in her mindset and in her mind. Uh, I just thought it was, it was pretty interesting having such a badass little 15 year old girl as your main character. I thought that was cool. Uh, so yeah, it's, uh, it's, a, it's a good little read. You can get through it pretty quick, very short novel. Uh, if you're into the whole zombie post-apocalyptic thing, this would be the one for you. All right guys, thanks for checking out my video. Uh, once again, if you like this kind of content, if you love to read, give me a thumbs up, subscribe down below, and uh, we'll, we'll keep churning these things out for you. Happy reading, take care.